Now, what in the world do y'all think y'all are looking at right here? This is some shrimp that came right out of Mobile Bay today. Shrimping season started the day before yesterday. And they got them for three dollars a pound up yonder. I got a couple of pounds. This is ended up costing seven dollars right here. And what I'm gonna fix in the deal with them. I'm gonna take. Look at that. That ain't no shrimp. That's cat food there. <laughs> oh. So take them like this right here. And I'm going to bust the head off of it. Drop it in that pot. For stock. And then cut the. The old. Uh, you know where out of them. The vein. Like that. Throw the shells in there. And then I'm going to wrench these pretty good once I get them. When I get through with that, I'm going to show you the next step. Now these have all been washed and deveined. And I'm going to put them in the freezer. Let them get solid rock hard freeze them for about an hour then I'm gonna put them in a, in a Ziploc bag and they won't stick to each other after that when I want to get out five or six to make a stir-fry I'll have some I know how old they are I know where they came from I know when they when I froze them June first part of June of this year so and it only takes a about a half a dozen to make a good dinner if you do it right. The rest of these, that's dinner tonight. Stand by, we've been to cook. <laughs> that's some bay leaves and crab balls and whatever I have. I take a little bit of that and dump it anywhere. And uh, I got some of this stuff right here. And that is going into that these here heads and shells right there uh-huh along with them bay leaves and I'm gonna let it all boil out and strain it while it's boiling I'm gonna be doing a roux y'all know how we do <laughs> all right I got about a quarter stick of butter And I'm going to add in about that much oil. Maybe a little more. Canola oil. And I'm going to add a bit of flour. Just plain flour. No self rising. Just plain flour. That's it. That's all. So, we're going to start cooking this bad boy. How about this now? That looking good. Got the fire turned off. I'm going to let the residual heat try to keep on toasting it a little bit. But I don't want it to be screaming hot when I add in my shrimp stock. Another thing I'm gonna do. Mm hmm. Rosetta rain gumbo fillet powder. I'm gonna add that right into the root. Just a little bit. We do it different over here. Other people don't put this in until they go ready to eat it. Well, that's fine too. But you can put it in there while you're cooking the roux, too. Stir it in. Smooth. 
me a lot. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Yes, sir. Keep staring at her. Ooh, y'all, we listen here. This is good old Mobile Bay shrimp. That's your head. It smells like a shrimp ball going on around the chair. That's all the bodies and the heads and the tails. Good old shrimp boy. We letting all them here get boiled up good. I ain't in no hurry with this. I want this to be good. Yes, sir. Now, let me see, I'm going to strain this leg, but when I think I feel like I'm ready, I'm going to strain this here liquid. Right straight over yon end of that part right there. But here, ain't no point in getting no hurry with it. Let that. Let all that juice from them heads and the tails and the bodies and all get happy, happy. Alright. I'm done with that. Now I'm going to take this there. This is a nice thing right here. I'm going to dump all that water from them shrimp heads in there like that right and I'm gonna stir turn that fire back on wide open now here's a very important step now what are you gonna do with these right here once you get them through? Now if you dump that in the trash can right now, you know what's gonna happen? Well, it ain't gonna be pretty in a couple of days. It's gonna be smelling loud as hell. So here's the solution. I've got the same bag that I got the shrimps from up here on at Mud Bugs. I got the same bag. And I'm gonna take all the here shrimp heads. The cats will not eat them. I have tried that before. That won't work. The coon won't come get them. They'll just sit there and stink up the yard for three or four weeks. You don't want to do that either. So, what we gotta do? JW, what must we do? we must do this. Put them right back in that bag we got them from. Stick them right back up in that bag right there like that. Tighten that bag up. And then take another bag. A better bag. Put that in there like that. Tighten that up. And take another bag, and now, you take that to the outside, to the garbage can, and then, hopefully, you won't be stinking up the neighborhood for three or four days. Alright, I've got me a big old onion sweet onion and a bell pepper and I'm going to chop it up fine and throw it in there. It's looking good over here. That shrimp stock. I'm letting that reduce. I'm going to turn that up half. Let that reduce. It's smelling good. Yes sir. Alright. I got that there. Uh, gumbo cooking down. I did my own bell pepper in there. I got some two cups this side right here. A water boiling with two with a, a, a teaspoon of salt. And then what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna take some uh, 
just distribute it around a little bit. And I am going to reduce. I ain't got no fancy ingredients in there right now. I don't got no turmeric or, and no, uh, oh, look, there's a surprise. I'm, I made Grandma some fish dinner for supper. I saved me some hush puppies to go with my gumbo later on when I get it dead. Alright, she kicking down now to give it a little more flavor. I got some uh, little chick fried chicken that I had left over. Going on in there with it, babe. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. Let it sit in there. Have to give it more flavor. Cover them back up and let it cook some more. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to do a little test on uh, what kind of, we'll put the, run that around and cool it off. Tasting mighty good, but it's lacking some stuff, so I'm gonna add some stuff. Add some stuff, Jada. Alright, let me rant to get it out. Alright, one thing, it ain't like it needs a little bit of salt. And it doesn't have as much of a fishy taste as I want it to have, so I'm going to put a salty fish sauce. Very good. I'm going to add a I'm going to add that much. Tighten her up, Dave. What you got to do? To give it that oyster flavor, this is some sauce that they make that uh, has made from oyster products. And what you do, shake the bottle, baby. Shake the bottle, baby. Twist it. What I do. Twist and shove. I don't need much of this. This is concentrated stuff. This concentrated paw paw, get out of here. Go boy, go boy, go boy, go boy. See that? Get up to that. Alright, now that's going to make it taste like it has oysters cooked in it. But I don't have to add any oysters. And it's also got salt in it. So, I've already added, I've seasoned it. I've got salty oyster sauce and salty fish sauce. Alright. That's looking good. But we need to add one more thing. And that would be some of this keycap manus is what I call it. Keycap manus sweet soy sauce. It's uh, used mostly in uh, Southeast Asian markets, but uh, it's a it's like a very nice condiment to add, and it has a nice feature. What it does is it tends to darken your sauce so this is what we have now and so uh, what we got now is 
Same amount. Same amount as the other stuff. Now this is not salty. It will give it flavor and darken it, but it's not salty. It's not soy sauce, this to seasoning salt kind. It's the kind to make it flavorful and darker. Now look at that. See what I'm talking about? Now, at this point in time, I've got it down to the point where I'm going to add the okra. Alright. I've added about two cups of chopped okra in there. I don't have my shrimp in there yet. I want this to be happy first. So I'm going to cover it up and let it kick another five or ten minutes until that okra gets tender. Alright, it's looking like it's sticking up good with that, with that okra right there. So what I'm going to do is let y'all go along with me on a taste test. I just want to make sure that okra did and flavors it right. Mmm. -hmm. All right. Now. Now. I'm gonna take this her shrimps, dump them in, dump them in, J Dub. Dump them in and stir them around. Let them kick around for about five minutes. That's all you got to do. The flavor's right. The rice is dead. Look how pretty that rice is. I'm going to just let it kick around for a minute. Now you could add anything else you wanted to. You could put a rabbit or or you could put alligator, or you could put some sausage in there, but I ain't got none of that right now, so. So I'm gonna just let it kick and cook another minute, and let them shrimps get all happy, happy. That's all I got to do. And I'm gonna pop me another top. Lash patat. And I heard a damn well. I mean, what the hell does lodge potat mean? Any what the hell does lodge potat mean any damn way? <laughs> Alright. Alright. Here's the important part of the process. You're going to get the one shot of Mr. Bacardi, baby. Superior. Like that right there. Good shot of old Bacardi. Hello. And then what you're gonna do it is add it to the recipe. Like that right there, babe. <laughs> I guarantee. Alright, where was I? Let's put these in. Look, look, see now, I should have went ahead and got these shrimps right on in the freezer. But I had to stop in a minute and go check on Grandma. It's alright. It'll be alright. They ain't thawed out yet. When they throw out, they'll be all sticking together. And then when you want to get two or three of them out of there to cook them, you'll, you'll have to just bang on all of them and just throw them in every kind of direction. But if you do it right, you don't need very many of these to cook with. You want to make some like shrimp fried rice or something, shrimp and Chinese vegetables or something like that. You'll have you some on hand. Okay. Put them in there like that and go in the freezer with it. That's all. Now, 
what's been going on with this right here. I've had it all turned off. Let's see if we can find shrimps in our dry dub. Look at that. Fresh shrimp right out of Mobile Bay, right there, babe. Fresh caught today. In a good sort of a base made from all the shells and everything from those shrimp. And I'm going to take and put a little bit of it on out the rice when I get hungry. Or if Granny will go to sleep. Alright, what do you got there, Paul Paul? Got some good old gumbo with chicken and shrimp. Man, have one of them old big boys. Oh yeah, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Later, later. Take two or more and call me in the morning. <laughs> Here we go, Jay Duck. I've got my Ziploc bag label. And nice clean tone. Now, what I want to do with these frozen shrimp. I done clean them, debang them. I seen where they came from. They're right here local. I'm gonna put them in here, but now you don't, you don't need tons and tons of shrimp to cook a menu. If you're Chinese cooking, you just need four or five for flavor. Okay, hold on, just a phone. I'll be right back. All right. While I'm waiting on my gumbo to get reduction and looking good. What I'm going to do is I've got me a Ziploc bag. I done broke my nervous ass riding on that June 1st Mobile Bay Shrimps. And so let's take a look at them bad boys. Take a look at them, J.W. Turn that down right there where y'all can see what I'm talking about. All right. I'm going to put them right out here at the freezer. Now all them, all them shrimps <coughs> has all been froze solid. They all froze solid. I'm gonna get them out there. Like that, right like there. Oh, where'd that water come from? That's just the stupidest thing, J. Dub. Why? That is just ignorant. Okay, supposedly, if you didn't have any water standing around, you would take these frozen shrimp and put them in this stupid bag and have frozen shrimp. But I didn't. I didn't wreck that. That ain't no, ain't no big deal. I just uh, stick them back in the freezer for a minute, let them all get hard again without no wet wetness on them. 